Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. So good to be with you in God's Word today, wherever you are. We are continuing our study uh, of devotions through the book of Acts. And we're in chapter 19 this week, finishing up today with verses 32 to 34. A little context is helpful. Paul is in Ephesus. He's doing ministry long term, several years. And uh, at, at some point, there is a uh, um, contention with the gospel because it's costing money to those who make uh, little idols uh, of the goddess Artemis. And, and so we're going to pick up on this riot that happens as, as an outcome of that. Verses 32 to 34 of chapter 19. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people did not even know why they were there. The Jews pushed Alexander up to the front. And some of the crowd shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make a defense before the people. But when they realized he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Well, what we have here is a riot. And we know a little bit about riots in our recent past in this country, don't we? Uh, protests are one of the great rights we have as citizens of the United States of America. But when protests turn to riots, when there is uh, damage of buildings and looting and even sometimes physical harm or perhaps death, uh, that's when things get out of control. And that's what we see happening here in, in Ephesus. There is great concern among the, the guild of the silversmiths that Christianity is taking away from their income. People are realizing that gods that are made by human hands are false gods, and that the true God, Jesus, the Messiah, Son of God, crucified and risen from the dead, is the only true God, and he alone is to be worshipped. That was cutting into their business a lot. And so this riot begins. Uh, there are people who'd like to do away with Paul and his companions. Uh, and even when... Uh, this poor man, uh, Alexander, is brought to the front and he tries to make a defense. You know, they shouted him down. Both Jews and Christians taught that there was only one true God. And so for two hours, they shouted. That must have been frightening uh, and also very frustrating. You know, it got me to thinking about the, the, our culture and the relationship of the gospel and the church to the, to the culture. In our culture, uh, the noisiest people are usually the ones who win. In other words, the noisiest people get noticed. We're in an election cycle here in the United States. We're a few months away from elections. And uh, you see the commercials, and they get what I would call noisier and noisier and noisier. In other words, uh, the, the candidates make bolder claims, and they're... There are celebrities involved and musicians and so on. And, and that happens also uh, some of the shows that we have, like uh, America's Got Talent. Uh, sorry, I have to, uh, my uh, YouTube video froze, so I have to put a little message here. So in our, our, um, our talent shows, America's Got Talent, who are the best singers? Well, they tend to be the most spectacular, uh, the loudest. Uh, who are... What are the, the sometimes the, the most popular movies? Often, it's not the, the, the quiet ones. Uh, it, it's the loudest movies with the biggest bangs, the biggest special effects, the, the most famous actors. And when it comes to theology and philosophy, uh, what we're often dealing with in our culture is that the people who have the loudest voices who shout the loudest are the ones who often seem to get the bulk of the attention. And so when someone says, Oh, Christianity's foolish and, uh, there, there's no, um, truth to it and so on. Um, and they shout that loud evolution is true. Then everybody seems to believe it, or at least it feels that way to us. But I want to remind you of something earlier in our text. And we heard this in our sermon on Sunday that the word of the Lord prevails. And while it may seem that the loudest voices are the ones getting all the attention and shouting down the faith, 
Let's remember that the Holy Spirit works through his word, often in quiet conversations between two individuals. God works through his word, and that word prevails. And so don't be discouraged if you feel like people are shouting down the truth. The Lord will get his word out. The Holy Spirit will continue to spread the gospel, and people will be brought to faith. I encourage you this week to maybe pray about this, and then maybe have a quiet conversation with a neighbor, a co-worker, a classmate, a friend, and see where the Lord takes it. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the risen one, and your word is going forth around the world. Help us not to be discouraged when it, when it seems that people are shouting you down or shouting the message of the gospel or the message of the church down. But help us to trust in your powerful word at work through the Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord.